The more things change, the more they stay the same. Unless we're talking about teenage fashion. That changes constantly. From Edwardian style dresses to tie-dye to greaser jackets all the way up to Jinko jeans. It's hard to tell what style teens are going to adopt next. So, today we're taking a trendy trip through the decades to show you what high schoolers wore each decade of the 20th century. But before we do, it might be fashionable of you to subscribe to the Weird History channel. Then head into the comments and let us know what other old-timey teenage trends you want to hear about. For now, keep your shirt on. We're getting to the history. There were two kinds of teens in the 90s, those who owned Jinko jeans and jealous poseurs. Like bell bottoms on steroids, Jinko denim jeans were a pinnacle of fashion design popularized by the hip hop, skate punk, and rave subcultures. If you couldn't fit a family of five under your pant legs, you were straight up tripping. Now, if you wanted to be like Kurt Cobain, you would pair those baggy boys with loose-fitting tees and oversized plaid flannels. That is how you smell like teen spirit. Teen girls in the 90s lived mostly out of Adelia's catalog. Upon those pages, you could find chunky shoes, Courtney Love-inspired baby doll dresses, and spaghetti strap tank tops, sometimes with stripes, sometimes grazing the low-rise hemline. Maxi skirts were all the rage if you were feeling ladylike. And if not, there was always that grungy baggy pants and shirt combo. The 80s were all about bold, vibrant colors and even bolder silhouettes. We're talking brightly colored Zubaz pants by day and Madonna-inspired lingerie outerwear by night. And don't forget a cropped leather jacket to really bring home the point that you are a material girl. This was also the decade when slogan tees became all the rage for dudes and dudettes alike. Just look at Wham's Choose Life wardrobe. And if you were a proto-girl boss, you better believe you'd be rocking shoulder pads. As if to say, watch out world, it's the 80s and my shoulders are big. For 70s teens who wanted to look bomb, it didn't get much groovier than denim which paired nicely with the swirly-whirly tie-dye designs on all the clothing racks. Guys and gals both donned bell-bottoms, which were flared pants that could double as parachutes were they to fall from some great distance. Miniskirts also permeated the scene, in varying lengths and styles such as corduroy and denim. Midriffs were typically on full display and paired with long, billowy caftans popularized by musicians like Joni Mitchell. Compared to the bright tones of the 80s, the 70s color palette was much more earth tone centered. We're talking beige, forest green, mustard, and chocolate. Hmm, anyone else getting the munchies? In 2023, mods are how you turn your GTA 5 character into Peter Griffin. But to be a mod in the 60s meant you were a teen who was totally with it. No cheat codes necessary. Mod style was popular among teenage boys tuned into modernist fashion, wearing tight-fitting suits, polo shirts, and Chelsea boots, strutting down London streets and listening only to the hippest music, like a little indie outfit called The Beatles. Ladies of the time would dress in designer Mary Quant's new fashion innovation, the miniskirt, a defining 60s staple for young women. Supermodel Twiggy was also notable for championing the oversized, overly colored mini dress style with brightly colored patterns which defined the decade. Older teens and young professionals could be found looking to Jackie O. Kennedy for fashion tips. Her shift dresses and pillbox hats were a must-have for any American woman. Traditional values were the name of the game in the 1950s, resulting in a notably wholesome style. If you were a young lady living halfway through the century, odds are you were donning a poodle skirt, a style championed by actress-turned-designer Julie Lynn Charlotte. The story goes that Charlotte had nothing to wear to a holiday party and sewed a Christmas tree onto her skirt. Christmas trees are an obvious gateway to poodles. And the fad skyrocketed from there. Even if the poodle wasn't your style, poofy skirts with pastel-colored sweaters and collared blouses created the standard 50s teen girl uniform. And for good little boys, a preppy casual look accomplished by a long-sleeved button-up and slacks was pretty nifty. But for the bad boys, there was the classic white t-shirt, blue jean, black leather jacket greaser look. And don't forget a gallon of hair product to maintain the pompadour. 
The first chunk of the 1940s was defined by war, prompting figures like Rosie the Riveter in 1943. Rosie inspired an entire generation of working women to learn the shocking truth. Men's clothing is pretty darn comfy. This androgynous style caused many a younger sister to raid her brother's closet for a button-down shirt to wear over some wide-legged jeans. Teen girls in the 40s also couldn't go wrong with solid-color A-line pleated skirts, as long as they agreed to keep them below the knee. Those were typically paired with a tailored jacket or a button-up sweater blouse with a Peter Pan collar. That's a collar that never grows old. As for boys, who were often drafted into war after graduating high school, these teenage troopers wore pleated high-waisted slacks and double-breasted suit jackets, often in a blue pinstripe or tan plaid pattern. No gray, though. That was too similar to the square old businessmen at the time. Some even opted to ditch the suit altogether in favor of cardigans and v-neck sweaters over dress shirts. And of course, high-waisted slacks all around. By the 1930s, retailers finally seemed to learn that teens liked to spend money on fashion. Unfortunately for Sears, they had just about the worst timing imaginable to run their big high school shop promotion in 1934. It was smack dab in the middle of a depression so prominent, they named it the Great One. But these hard times led to the invention and prominence of feed sack dresses, which are, as the name would suggest, dresses made from the sacks that held chicken feed. Prom was tough in that decade. Companies began packaging chicken feed in dress quality fabric. And by the time the depression was in full swing, many of these feed sacks came with desirable floral prints. You could collect all five in specially marked packages of chicken feed at participating stores. Who says a depression needs to be depressing? On the opposite end of the socioeconomic spectrum, Hollywood starlets like Greta Garbo, Jean Harlow, and Marlene Dietrich rocked dresses that hit above the ankle and day suits, which included a matching sweater and maxi skirt combo. Men in the 30s were all about masculinity, in direct contrast to the feminine women's style of the time. But during the Depression, you had to be a manly man on a budget. With money being tight, retailers sold outfits packaged together like fast food combo meals. That included a suit, hat, socks, two dress shirts, a tie, and a pair of shoes for just $25. Huh, do you get fries with that? And if you were wearing a jacket, it was almost definitely a trench coat the jacket of choice for hard-boiled private eyes everywhere. Things in the States were pretty rough a hundred years ago during World War I, but nothing was rougher than teen fashion, because many supplies, including fabric, were largely unavailable. Also, it was the 1920s, which was a pretty tough time to be a teen all around. Once the war ended, fashion rocketed to the forefront of the teen mindset. Jazz, music, and prohibition ushered in an era of extreme risk-taking, which overflowed into the fashion world in the form of the flapper look, marked by silk, drop-waist dresses, fringe, headbands, and felt hats. The felt hat? How risky. Teen girls with a little bit more cash money could be found flaunting their cloche hats and knee-length fur trim coats, along with diamond-studded neck braces from turning down their noses at the bourgeois. Boys of the time dressed quite dashingly, with smaller versions of their father's suits. A real Dr. Evil mini-me situation. Round lapels, pleated trousers, and single-breasted wool jackets with matching suit vests completed the ensemble on a casual day. Huh, don't they know casual means sweatpants? Wanna hear something wild? In 1910, a survey revealed that wealthy high school students at a New York City private girls' school spent $556 each year on clothes. Adjusted for inflation, that would equate to around $18,000 today. Meanwhile, we're still wearing hand-me-downs from 2002. People still like tattoo, right? In the 1910s, expensive and opulent Edwardian fashion was all the rage. Adults could be seen gallivanting around in floor-length tea dresses, cotton day dresses, or walking suits with blouses. Teens, on the other hand, were known to wear their hemlines a few inches shorter, along with fitted suit tops. And of course, the whole thing was topped off with an elaborate tea party hat that matched the ensemble. Think Rose's ensemble in the Titanic party scenes, and you're on the right track, as long as you avoid that iceberg. Silhouettes were cinched at the waist using belts or ties for that classic and painful hourglass look. Top the whole thing off with a billowy feminine blouse, and you'd have the boys shouting, 23 skidoo. Whatever that means. Speaking of the fellas, their style included trousers and a single-breasted Norfolk jacket. This was also about the time boys stopped caring about matching their jackets with their slacks, and just went buck wild with the power clashing. 
Also in style was the carnival barker chic look of seersucker suits and straw boater hats. Perfect for all those roving gangs of barbershop quartets that plagued the decade. When discussing kids of a certain age at the turn of the century, be careful not to use the word teenager, as it wasn't really invented yet. And fashion as such was largely the same for teens and adults alike. Fashion catalogs at the time focused on clothing made for girls or little women. As the 20th century came into its own, the reign of round mutton sleeves from the late 1800s stood firmly, worn with blouses or Edwardian style dresses that weren't quite as nice as the ones released a decade later. These dresses reached the floor and were considered formal attire to be worn while entertaining at home. They also probably saved a ton on sweeping. Tea gowns and fancy tea hats, which are hats worn while drinking tea, not hats made of tea, were popular before and during the turn of the century. Boys in this pre-zipper society wore single-breasted suits with matching vests, after graduating from the short pants and knickers of childhood. And the bowler caps were the must-have headwear of the time. So you know which cap to bring with you when you take your homecoming date to Teddy Roosevelt's inauguration. So what do you think? Which decade's high schoolers had the best clothes? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.